So what, what is this R Studio? Um, R Studio is what's called an IDE or an integrated development environment, which might sound like a lot of jargon, um, and it kind of is. But basically what it means is that it's, it's a setup that's gonna help you work in R and it makes things a lot easier. So it's not quite a GUI system like Stata, which has a drop down menu. Um, if you're used to that, you might wanna check out these links, but instead it's, it's got a lot of interactivity like a typical GUI, but um, it also allows you to meaning that you can press buttons and things like that, but you can also uh, just directly write your commands for your R code as well. And so we'll, we'll go through some of it together. Um, so how does it make it easier to work in R? It, one of the major things that it does is it can complete your code. So if you start writing code, it'll offer suggestions and you can press tab and complete the code. Um, and that's really nice because you might not quite remember all of the function names for a particular package and you can start typing in um, the beginning of the function and it will suggest the rest of it. Um, it also does some nice things for formatting and um, it makes it really easy to find your files and work with something called a project. And we'll talk about that in a bit, but this basically allows you to save settings for a particular project, um, which is really nice. And it, it loads all the files and everything that you were last working on. Um, it also provides a ways to look at your data um, and it gives you ways to look at your plots as you're making figures, which is really helpful. Um, and it allows you to export those in different file types, um, as well as giving you help information for functions um, and packages. Um, and finally, also information about history of the commands that you've used. Okay. So this is basically what it looks like if you have installed our studio and you've opened it up. Um, I realize it's a little blurry. You don't need to know the details yet, but it should look something like this, or you have, you know, some sort of larger square and uh, some smaller squares on the side. Um, and we'll talk about what each of these panes is for. Um, there are two main panes that we're going to be working with, which is called the editor and the console. And typically, you'll start out with this previous view where you only have the console. To actually open the editor, you have to open a file. So there's this little green button in the upper left corner. If you press that, you can start creating an R script or an R markdown file, which is something that we'll be using a lot. Um, and once you open that, you'll now have your editor and your console open. So what do each of these things do? So the editor is basically where you're going to write what's called scripts, which is sort of like a static version of your code. Um, and in our, in our fancier files that we're gonna call our markdown, it's where you're also going to write descriptions of what you're doing. And, um, so this is really great for, for reproducibility, which Candace is gonna talk more about. Um, so you can try things out interactively in the console. And then once you're happy with what you have, you can um, save that in your script or R markdown file in the editor. So the console is more of just like a live testing space for code. And so it's great to use as a calculator um, for creating new variables, applying functions, and just seeing what happens to your data or taking a look at your data. So the editor is here on the top. Um, it's also where you open multiple files. So you could have multiple scripts or R markdown files open and they'll stack along the top right here. And then you can just press on each tab to toggle between them. Um, and if you wanted to highlight 
portions of code, you can do so with your cursor and then you can press command enter in Mac or control enter in Windows to actually run the code. Otherwise, when you run it in the console, which is the bottom part typically, um, you just need to press enter after you type it in and it should execute the code. Um, note that if you type things in the console, it's your, your code's not really gonna be saved. It technically will be in your history, but if you don't save your workspace, which we recommend that you don't do when you close out um, our studio, then you will not have any record of, of those commands that you're using, which is why you want to um, save it in some file type. Um, and also, I mean, when you have it in a history, it's not a really good way to rely on looking through your code because it's hard to tell which, which actual command worked. Say you tried six times or something and the sixth time work, it worked, it might be unclear later which one actually is the command that worked. Okay, this is a busy cheat sheet example. This is what cheat sheets often look like. Um, there is a cheat sheet for our studio, which explains all of the uh, details about our studio. There's a ton of details on here. Um, I don't use all of these features, but if you're interested in learning more about what you can do in our studio, um, I recommend checking it out. Okay, so just to get us even more familiar with these terms, because we're using some jargon here. So we're using our functions, which are the words with parentheses right after that do something in R and return a result, and they're part of these packages. So a little bit more on packages. Where do you find them? Where do they come from? <clears throat> so when you install R, you're going to have some basic packages and functions um, that will automatically be there, um, like the iris data. <clears throat> and so a lot of these are really useful but you can install additional packages from a place called CRAN and a place called GitHub. And so on CRAN, they're a little more vetted. People have to um, go through a committee to actually publish their packages on CRAN. On GitHub, it's basically the Wild West. Anyone can do this um, that, that knows how and wants to. Um, so CRAN packages are generally a little more trustworthy, but the vetting process is not very deep. So um, it's you, you can't necessarily know how well to trust them, which we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, because again, these are developed by kind of whoever um, in, the, in the community. Um, so again, you can think of these as our extensions. And so, um, the tidyverse packages, like we said, where they're mostly developed by people at our studio, um, and we would consider them very trustworthy. If you want to know more about how to trust a package, check out this link. Um, Hadley Wickham is um, works at our studio and is one of the major authorities there on on our packages. So. Um, if you see anything published by Hadley, you can trust it. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna take a deeper look into our studio. Okay, so um, we talked a little bit about these, our projects, they're super helpful. I highly recommend that you use them anytime that you're doing any sort of data analysis work for any particular set of data. So it just helps you organize your work. It helps you get started quicker the next time you go into this um, project. And um, it, it just easily allows you to organize things. So the way that you do this is a, is a kind of a four-step process. You can go to file and say new project. And then you need to select either an existing directory or a new directory. Um, and then you will say new project, and then you name your new project. So if you want to try doing this later, you it would be nice if you created a project, for example, for the class. And um, <clears throat> you might name that, for example, intro to R. 
And don't worry if this feels a little quick, you can go back to these slides and check them later. And we can also go through some of this during the lab. Okay, so our markdown files, we've talked a bit about, um, they have this suffix of .rmd. And the great thing about this is they help you create these really beautiful reports that include your code and the output of your code, as well as um, any sort of um, text about what you're doing in your analysis. So they're really great for um, reproducibility, which Candace will talk about. So um, another interesting thing about this is that it helps you create a variety of different file types. So you can create um, a website version, an HTML version of a report. You can create a PDF, a Word document, um, all sorts of different file types. So that's really helpful. Um, so basically, when we're using an R markdown file, we're going to be writing our code inside what's called a code chunk. And so this is what a code chunk will look like. You basically type these, um, these, uh, what is that? <laughs> it's, I had like a, a tick, back tick, I guess. And uh, you, you put inside brackets that you're going to be using R because actually in R Markdown, you can use different languages. So you need to specify that you're going to be using R. You can name a chunk something so that you know what it was that you were doing, um, but it can just be R. And then um, you type in your code underneath. So in this case, we're using a function called summary around a data set called cars. And then once there's actually code in there, you have the option to run a chunk and you can press this little green play button and it will run that chunk and, and give you the output of the results. Uh, once you have all your code chunks and everything ready, um, you can do something called knit. So knitting your uh, R markdown file will create the report that we've been talking about. And so there's this little um, spool of yarn, I guess, because um, when you knit, you use yarn. So there's a little ball of yarn button that you can press. And when you press the down button, um, it's going to give you some options for what type of file you want your report to look like. Um, knitting to HTML is generally what I would suggest um, because any sort of interactive thing would work uh, in when you have it in HTML format. So I would suggest just starting out with that. <clears throat> um, and it's a good idea to, when you're writing a report, to try knitting frequently. Um, so to create an R markdown file, we kind of showed this a little bit, but again, it's this, this green button in the left corner. In this case, you would skip, skip R script. Um, you come down to the third item, click on this, and that will create an R markdown which if you haven't tried doing this yet, it'll create that editor at the top of your RStudio. And so you'll have this layout like this, where you have your editor at the top, you'll have an R markdown that looks like this. It already has a chunk in it and a bunch of text describing what an R markdown is. You have your console where you can try your interactive code. You have an environment. So anytime you create new variables, or load data, it's gonna show up in here. Um, you have history, which shows history of your code. And, and then this, this pane here, which is really helpful for looking at files. I have some more about that in a second. So if your layout doesn't look like we just showed, it should, <laughs> other than perhaps only having your console and not an editor yet. Um, but if, if for some reason you close something and you can't see part of your RStudio layout like you would like, you can go to RStudio preferences and pane layout and you can set up things again um, the way that you would like. Or if you have a preference that's different from the default, you can do that too. So the Workspace, like I said, this is where you're going to have variables. Um, there's this little button here that looks like a broom. 
if you decide that you want to get rid of the data that you've loaded, because maybe you loaded it incorrectly or something, you can you can press this press this button and it will um, delete your environment. There's also some other tabs here related to some more advanced things that we won't really cover in the class. So it tells you what objects you have currently loaded in R, um, what you've read in, and the history shows your previous commands. Again, it's not a great system for relying on it if you want to <laughs> save what you did. Um, instead, we suggest that you do this in R Markdown. One useful thing though, if you've been trying things in the console and you wanna redo um, or modify a command that you just typed in, you can type the up arrow to find a previous command. That can be really, really helpful. So the file pane on the bottom right will show you the files that you have in the directories on your computer. Um, and the viewer will help you to view data or R objects. Um, help, you can type in the name of packages or functions to get information about them. Um, plots will show you the plots that you're creating and you can kind of scroll back to see a history of some of your plots. And packages shows you what packages you actually have loaded. Um, so that's also useful. There are shortcuts that can be really helpful. Um, you don't really need to worry about this if, if you don't want to and um, you know, you're just beginning. But if you're someone that gets really irritated by tedious things like that, there are shortcuts to help you out. So you can use control enter if you have a PC or command enter on a Mac um, to run a particular line of code in your editor. So in your file or static script or R markdown that you're working in. Um, and also if you wanna to toggle between the editor and the console, you can by typing control one and control two. There's a whole list of shortcuts that you can use um, and this, this link takes you to them. So, um, so for viewing data, you can type in the command view and the name of the data. So empty cars is some data that's actually loaded with R. If you do that, it'll take you um, to a special way of viewing the data. Um, otherwise you can data view the data in the console directly or, or in an R markdown report um, by typing in commands like head, which we've shown you previously, or tail. So head shows you the first six rows by default and tail will show you the last six. Um, and it can sometimes be good to look at the the bottom of your data as well, because sometimes it's not what you expect from. Um, <laughs> so it's a good it's a good idea. We've we've had this a, a question a few times. The difference between script and R Markdown. It'll be a little more obvious when we start working in our studio and take a look at it ourselves. Um, then you'll see that R Markdown creates these reports, whereas scripts are really just where we write um, commands and you can put comments by putting a hashtag in front of text, but our markdown is, is what we would highly recommend that you do instead. Um, it creates a much more sophisticated output that helps you to test your code as well. Um, and it's also great if you're working with collaborators or working with yourself in the future, <laughs> like uh, Candice will cover a lot of this in, in just a minute, but. Our markdowns are great. 